Okay, Bitcoin. So we uh, we're in this particular uh, correction here. Uh, we're looking at it as wave one and two. It's possible to look at it as wave four as well, but we wouldn't want wave four to overlap this little area through here. And as I've mentioned before, quite often that group two here, 65, 72 and 80, um, tend to hold the market while it's reacting from the uh, major trading level three here, or any sort of level really. Um, <clears throat> so we may not get down to the 20, you know, 50, 60% retracement level here. We may come down to the 26. Um, as I've mentioned before, our last, in the last video, we may just spike below it uh, into the 26 and those sort of things. We may end up coming down here. We may end up coming that deep down here. We don't really know because, um, you know, this particular correction that's happening, the first leg here is pretty simple. It's, a, it's pretty much a straight line, but then it gets all sort of uh, wonky here. And I'm just looking at, at this. <laughs> there's probably at least four different ways to count this. So um, basically I'll put it into the guessing game category. And uh, last time we spoke, um, I'm not sure exactly where we were a few days ago on this, but um, I think we're down at wave three. We're looking for wave four and then wave five to the downside. So we've got it there in those short, sharp shots there. And um, so if that is the case, we've seen it rally back up here a little bit small to put a fourth wave in here I'd like to see a little bit more volume in in in, in this so um but yeah so uh i think that's all pretty much good at this point i'm just just checking here visually but <clears throat> so yeah look um we could certainly um certainly uh you know wingle around in here for a little bit and and have that way four and then come down for wave five here as we were looking at just here. <clears throat> Putting this over here and this little wave five over here of C of two here. That would be one way to look at it. We also looked at it with this low in place here, didn't we? And we looked at this because, look, it's not the best five wave structure up here because it overlaps. It's better at treating it as, as an A and a B and then one, two, three, three and here, four, five. But <clears throat> if we put wave B here, then we'd have one, two, three, four, five, and that would be the low there. Simple as that. You know, the other side of this as well is that, um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with wave B being up here and looking at one and two and three and four and five here. Uh, that's that's my sort of happiest moment with all of this. Um, you can you can um, <clears throat> you can put it as the A wave here. You could put an A and a B and a C wave over here for a B and have a low in here. You could start W X Ying all of this as well and still have a low here or down here with this as well. Uh, you could probably even look at this a bit of a long shot here instead of the B wave here, which does count kind of like a B wave, but happened that quick. We could also put wave one here and then put this wave two over here, then wave one here and wave two over here. So that would actually take it down uh, a little bit deeper at that point into the 25 uh, area here, because the length of wave five here should be roughly the same as wave one here. Take that with a pinch of salt. I mean, the other thing here too, you know, is that, um, uh, where's the, where's the NASDAQ here? So the NASDAQ, you know, we know that there's a bit of a correlation between the two of them. This is the NASDAQ here, but they haven't really been correlating actually for, you know, on the intraday basis for a, a little while now. I mean, the NASDAQ's moving up here, but the NASDAQ is about to, sort of explode into a third wave here because we've got five waves here for one and two and then we've got one and two here, one and two here and one and two here. So we're looking for a nice punchline here, you know. <clears throat> uh, so there may be some people moving into this market because the core inflation in the US was dropped drop from five to 4.9. Not that that's a, a, anything, but it's roughly the same. So, you know, it could ease up um, on the Fed's... Um, uh, into pausing rates, probably not, but um, anyway, an excuse to get high, um, well, to go high. Um, so, yeah, well, will Bitcoin follow the NASDAQ up? That's the, that's a little 
thing here. They're going in the opposite directions at the moment, aren't they? You know, <clears throat> so from what dates that? That's April the 14th. This will be uh, not April the 14th, surely. Um, oh, yeah, my God. Right. That was way over here. April the 13th. Oh, that's interesting. That's that. So that top over here is this low here for that. So we've been from that point that April roughly 13, 14 here has been pushing up while Bitcoin has been like fallen asleep. So this is the first time we noted this. Yes. Last time we spoke um, or the time before that there was a difference in, in them and, <clears throat> Which I, which I think is really healthy, which is, um, it, yeah, it's, it's very healthy actually. So that's, um, that's good. Anyway, so perhaps, you know, the NASDAQ is not going to, uh, throw the, uh, life boy out to Bitcoin and pull it up. But anyway, um, you know, this is, to me, this just doesn't seem finished. Um, we'll see. I mean, I would like to say you could go long above here, but I'm just be concerned about this way four that would pull back to this way four, that type of thing, you know, the 38.2%. So, yeah, so the whole thing, um, it's 50%. So you could probably buy that high, but I'll, I just not, it's not strong enough. I need to see an impulse wave up there and, uh, uh it's not there just yet. So, uh, look, yeah, just. I think there'll be, there's lots of support in group two here and that, that support will continue, uh, here and, um, yeah. So I don't know what else to add really. It's just, um, it's just really waiting to see this finish off here, you know, let's see, <clears throat> nothing more to add. I'll leave it at that. I mean, if the market, if this market here trades down, pokes its nose down past the 26,500 here, the lower end of group two, if it pierces this here and then finds support back on top of the 28 here, then it's, then it's all good to go at that point. You could, pr even if it poked down here and found support, a tested support back on the 72 here, 272, um, with the classic trading levels pattern or there about something like that on the 272, then you can take that high or that high. But the variation on that particular pattern is it will drop down here, which is more common. So it drops down here first and then gets back up. So it's a bit of a rinse and repeat of that situation. But, um, that's what support looks like taking out new highs at some point. Um, after it's created the first high. So yeah, if you get that, if it drops down to here and then gets back up to here, then, you know, you can build in, in that way. And if you get caught out, I'll just sort of hold it and keep a stop well under the 25 mark here at this point. Okay. So let's leave it at that. Um, I mean, there, pro there is probably a bearish count with this at this point. Um, yeah, no, I can't see that unless we end up with this as a WXY up here, possible. But we didn't really get five waves down here either, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to the to a big spike like that. Anyway, let's see. I think there's a little one more to go down here. Okay, cheers. <clears throat>